In this video, I'm going to be talking about pictographs. So yesterday we did bar graphs, so I had this data here, and I put it into a bar graph. And before I could do that, I had to decide on a scale for my bar graph. I had to look at the range of my numbers so that I could, you know, efficiently make my bar graph. So here, my numbers were 9, 14, and 11, so I could have used a scale of 0 to 14, maybe 0 to 15, or even 0 to 20, but it wouldn't have really been meaningful to do a scale of 0 to 1 100 because I'm not using the upper part of that scale. Um, so you really want to choose a scale that you're using the majority of it. Then we also chose an interval, which was how we were counting through our scale. So here I did an interval of twos. Today we are going to take that same information and we're going to put it into a pictograph. Um, and so let me show you an example of what a pictograph is first, and then I'm going to go ahead and make mine for you. So here's a pictograph that we looked at in class today. So the topic of this pictograph was favorite sports that people really liked. And so the reason it's a pictograph is it's showing data with pictures. Um, so since it's about sports, they used soccer balls to represent the data. What's very important about a pictograph is that a lot of times they have a key. And you have to really look for that key. Otherwise, the information that you're going to be telling about the graph is probably not accurate. So here you see a bunch of soccer balls and you would think, oh, five people like basketball, six people like soccer, and so on. But that's really not accurate because one ball is actually equal to eight votes. So you actually have to do eight, 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 or five times eight. Um, here, each one is eight, so six times eight. So you have to use that key to get the accurate information of how many votes are voting for each sport. So that's a pictograph. Um, I'm now going to go ahead and make a pictograph of my data here for the snow activities. So I've already set mine up a little bit. It's kind of just like a chart. Um, and so I've decided, you know, since mine is about snow activities, my symbol is going to be like kind of like a little snowflake. Um, so I'm going to show a snowflake to show that nine people were sledding, 14 people were doing a snowman, and 11 people were doing a snowball fight. Now I need to think, too, do I want my snowflake to represent one person, or do I want my snowflake to represent 11, um, a different value? So you have to think about your numbers. Now, it would be okay for me to just draw, you know, nine snowflakes, 14 snowflakes, 11 snowflakes. But if you look, um, if you think back to the sport one we just did, it really wouldn't have been efficient for me to draw 48 soccer balls for the 48 people that chose a certain sport. So that's why they use a key, so it's a little bit more efficient. So here, I'm actually going to use a key that the snowflake equals two. So every time I draw a snowflake, it actually is representing two people doing that snow activity. So let me start with sledding. I have nine people, so I'm going to draw my snowflakes to represent nine people, but I have to keep in mind my key. So every time I draw a snowflake, I'm actually going to count two. So here is two people, four people, six people, eight people. Now if I draw a snowflake, I'm going to have 10 people and that's not matching my data. So I actually have to draw half of a snowflake because that would be two, four, six, eight, nine, ten would be a whole snowflake, but I only want half of a snowflake. So you also have to keep in mind whatever you're using as your symbol needs to be able to be broken apart if needed. And also too, you want to use a key that's going to let you show parts of something. If I chose five and did five, how would I show part of five to represent four? That would be a little tricky. So you're going to have to be really mindful of what you're choosing as your object and your key. Now let me move, let me move on to building a snowman. That's 14 people. Some people noticed in today in class that if your key is two and it's an even number, you can represent it with a whole symbol. If it's an odd number, it won't work. So some people were making that connection. Uh, so here I have two people, four people, six people, eight people, ten people, twelve people, fourteen people. Oh, I'm already starting to see in my graph that more people were choosing the snowman. Snowball fight, eleven people. So two people, four, six, eight, 
10. Now if I do a whole snowflake, that's going to give me 12. And I only want one more. So I'm going to actually use part of a snowflake to show that that is 11 people. So here's my pictograph. When you are doing um, yours today for homework, you need to be finishing up about Kanye's CDs. So using that data from the back that you already had from yesterday about his CDs to make the pictograph, I can think of um, three different keys you could use that would be meaningful to me and would make sense to me. Um, so choose the one that's going to be the best for you. After you finish Kanye's CDs for that data, then you are going to be doing some looking at, thinking about, and writing about the Girl Scout cookie pictograph. So use this video to help you with your data collecting and making of pictographs.